morning, everyone. Good morning. Glad to be here today and ready to worship the Lord. It's nothing like worship time. I'd like to add to the announcement and call. Uh, please forgive me. Um, you and Celeste are brothers and sisters. And I forgot to mention your name. That is your mom. Uh, so please forgive me. Congregation and Paul. That's Paul's mother too. And, uh, forgive me. And I also forgot to announce there are three job skills workshops. So if you don't have a job, uh, come to this workshop. I'll put this on the back table for you um, to come and um, put your talents on the line. May 4th and May 13th from 10 to 2 from North Avenue Suite 1. Okay? So if you need a job, and if you're not working, you need a job. <laughs> Turn to Revelation chapter 4. Passages will be 6 through 8. Subject this morning is seeing it. Have you ever wanted to know what lies beyond? Remember the movie Star Trek? Go where no man has ever gone before. Captain Kirk used to always say that. Start it right. Let's, let's aim at that. Always want to know what lies ahead. What will my future be like? Well, if you're in Christ Jesus, you don't have to worry about your future because he holds the future in his hand. We've been taught that since Bible school. That God holds the future in his hand. But as we got older, we noticed that there are some things about our future we can be a part of right now. Like I tell my friends over at the prospect house about tomorrow. Fix the day. So you don't have to take today into tomorrow. And when you wake up in the morning, tomorrow will be all right. If you fix today, you don't have to worry about it. So many, many of us carry today into tomorrow. Because uh, by nature, we just unresolved people. We don't like resolution. Uh, we don't resolve things. We just like things to linger out there. But God holds the future in his hand. There's two things that I truly enjoy about the Bible. One is what we're getting ready to read, and the other one is there's a hell. Because knowing that there's a hell keeps heaven a perspective and put it in the proper perspective. Because in order for there to be a heaven, like I tell my noble witness family and friends, it's got to be a hell. There's no reward for doing good if there's no punishment. And my analogy has always been with mom and dad. If you can't understand the fathership of God, then you totally disrespect the authority of your mom and dad. Because I guarantee you, if your mother and father had any disciplined sense amongst them or about them when you did something wrong, you got punished for it. And God is no different. Um, we have to understand that. And what keeps the perspective line straight for me is, I don't let just anybody in my house. I have a guest list. I don't know about you, but I have a guest list. And you have to meet my criteria to come into my home. You cannot come into my home and do what you want. Amen. That's my criteria. When you come into my home, you must respect my home because that's what I have and that's what I own. It belongs to me. That's right. And I'm not talking about the mortgage payments that I make. I'm talking about my peace of mind. Like, I'm not going to let you come in my home and destroy my peace of mind because I kick you out in a minute. Mm -hmm. I have no problem. And I've kicked people out of my home. Get up, get out. As a Christian, I've said that. Not in here. You're not going to do all that swearing. And, no, bye. See you later. Mm -hmm. No, no. 
why do we have a hard time believing that God is not the same way about his house? Yeah. I, I just don't understand human beings like that. Maybe you let anybody in your house. Mm, I don't know. Maybe you're the kind of person that can't stand up to people when they start doing things in your home. But that's not me. But God doesn't let anybody in his house because what we're getting ready to see right now, his house is orderly, his house is busy, and his house is righteous. Yeah. So anybody that comes in his house first got to meet his criteria or you're not coming in the house. Amen. As simple as that. So whatever beef you have with God, you got to have it fixed before you get in his house because he's not going to let just anybody in his house. And I understand why. Because God's house is ran by him. Satan found that out. Yeah, You're not going to yeah. rebel against me. You're not going to say you want to be me. You want to be above me. You want my house. Adam found that out. Adam. Yeah. You got to get out of here. So we have always seen how God is. And, and we're going to see. Well, let's go. Let's, let's start reading. Let's start reading. And, and, and those of you, I hope you're there. Revelation 4, 6. And let's just read it in its simplicity, and then I'll, I'll read what scholars think it means and everything, the symbolic portion of this. But let's just read it in its simplicity. God is good, isn't he? Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne, and around the throne, were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf, the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they did not rest day nor night, saying, holy, holy, holy. Three times, right? God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Right. See, I recognize the people that is in the house, right? Yes. And he may go with me so far. Lord God Almighty, who was who is? and is mm -hmm. and is to come. Isn't that three times? Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word was with God. See, you with me. So when John got a chance to go to our Father's house, he got to see some things that was already ongoing. Mm -hmm. When the door was open, God let him see how busy the home is, what was in the home, and the things that were going on in the home. When you come to my house and walk through my threshold, you get to see the first thing, the steps, the two tables is by the window. You get to see into my dining room. Mm -hmm. You get to see to the right my living room. To the left, you get to see where the kitchen is. You get to see what's in my home. Yeah. God allowed John, and I want you to write these things. I want you to let people know. I want readers to know in 2013 what my house looked like and what's yeah. going on in my home. Because, see, I know everything. I see everything. You need to let people know that. So when they start acting up, what you do in the dark, I'm going to bring the light. And what is said underneath somewhere, I'm going to get on the rooftop and I'm going to shout it out loud. You need to know what's in my home. See, you need to sometimes just study these things when you talk about God. Mm -hmm. The three, because it's always going to mention the three. The Bible's never going to disprove anything about God, the, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and you and I need to learn that. And our house needs to start reflecting what God's house is. Mm -hmm. It does. You, you need to have some people in there that are praying. You need to have some people who are looking around and looking at everything. You need to have some people in there that are spiritual. Because it's like God's house. That's what I'm saying. There's a criteria in my home. I'm not going to have people in my home who are not spiritual. Because that's going to drive me crazy. Amen. The people who are not spiritual got to live in my house. Amen. I've worked hard, brothers and sisters, for my house to be spiritual. Amen. And I'm not going to let my children or my wife or me or anybody destroy what I know is a reflection of God's house. Yes. Is your house like that? If I walked in your door, will I see the peace of God in your home? Or will I see chaos? Will I see your children talking to you any kind of way? Your wife or your husband talking to you any kind of way? Are we examples of God? Amen. People should be able to see that. 
God allowed John to see a lot of things. And I just want you to see that John was privileged to do this. Remember in the four Gospels who wrote about the end of Jesus' life. Matthew, Mark, and Luke didn't do that. John was always leaning on Jesus. I don't know how in the world a man can do that with another man. It, it's only love. He was so in tune to what, and you know what? Read the Gospel of John. And read Revelation, and then go back and read Genesis. It sounds like Jesus himself yeah. wrote it. Because he was that close to him. I haven't found a man today that leans on another man and listens to every word that comes out of that man's mouth. Men don't do that. We are so hostile toward one another as men. We are. You say something, I say something different. You say something right, I say something wrong. But John leaned on Jesus and took in everything. And you remember at the end? And I'm going to make y'all look for this. When Jesus appeared to the disciples, John wasn't there. John was coming. And Peter said, there is one. Because Peter thought he was the one that betrayed. And what did Jesus say? I'm going to let you finish this story about John. He rebuked Peter. He said, what business is it of you? Because Jesus knew who John was. Who did Jesus give his mama to? Oh, my Because see, when you lean on me, I'm going to feel you. Yeah. When you touch the hem of my garment, I'm going to know something went out of me. You know why? Because I'm Jesus. Yeah. Think about it. Who did God let and take a peek into his home? Yeah. John. Are you taking a peek into God's home? from your front door? If Jesus came to your house right now, will your home be a reflection of his? Or would he have to do some house cleaning? <laughs> think about it. I can only think of Eunice and Lois with Timothy with a Greek father. In that house was God. Remember on Wednesday nights, my mother used to come home from work, and she used to make spaghetti and meat. And she used to open her door. I told you this before. She opened open her door, and while she was at the sink, she used to sing a gospel hymn. You know who she got it from? My grandmother. Because my grandmother used to do the same thing. So when people came in town, and some of the hardest people in Old Town Miami came in my home. I couldn't understand why in the world my mother would open the door, just open the door and leave the door open. And people would come in and get something to eat and say, Mrs. Stanley, thank you. Thank you. I couldn't believe that. I don't do that today. No. I don't leave my door open on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I'm not letting nobody come in my house because today was some crazy people be coming in. But you know what crazy people came in my mother's house? Mm. And you know what? We never got robbed. Oh my God. And every time my mother walked to the bus stop, which we used to, me and my brother used to watch my mother walk out of sight. No one never touched my mom. And we used to see my our mother coming from the horizon. No one never touched Mrs. Stan. You know why? Yeah. <laughs> because her home was a reflection of her life. Amen. God's home is a reflection of who he is. And John got to see that. What about you and I? What's in your house? See, we are known and we are judged by the fruit basket that we carry with us. Because Jesus said you would know him by the fruit. Apples, he get apples. Oranges, he get oranges. If you're rotten, you got a rotten fruit basket. Not a reflection. Mm -hmm. Not a reflection at all. So what's in your home? Yes. What's in your home? After these things, verse 1, I looked and behold a door standing open yes. in heaven. Yes. 
And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. And immediately I was in the spirit. We cannot see him. We cannot behold him in the flesh. So God had to stay consistent with his word that no one sees me and live. So he had to transform John into the spirit so John could live. And you see that in the Old Testament when he showed himself in a vision or in a dream where people were taken out of the body. Paul talked about the out-of-body experience. When you and I come before God, if we ever get a privilege, we have to be in the spirit because that's where yes. God is. That's who he is. He told Roman at the well, we are looking for those who will worship God in truth and in spirit. He must be consistent with his word. And the door was open. See, that's what I like about God. It's always like this. You got a lock on your door. Two locks on your door. You got a welcome mat in the front of your door welcoming people, but you got a lock on your door. Yeah. How in the world can you welcome somebody when the door is locked? Ooh. You got, I got a welcome mat outside my door, but I already told you I don't let nobody in. Very selective about people who come in. Mm -hmm. But the door was open. See, God ain't got nothing to worry about, y'all. God ain't afraid of nothing. See, nobody's going to run into God's home unless mm -hmm. God calls. Amen. God doesn't have the fears that you and I have. No. He don't. Because in heaven is where God's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And those who are there are supposed to be here. And that's what we're down here working on. And working towards so we can get to the open door of God. See, the gates, the pearly gates that they talk about, mm -hmm. is open. And John got to see that. Can you imagine what he felt like when he got to the home of God? And that that home is going to come down. He's going to do away with the heavens and the earth. And he's going to bring the new Jerusalem down. The home of God that John got to experience, you and I are going to be in if we endure. Don't you want to go there? Yeah, Don't you want to go to that land? Yeah. On Jordan's banks, on Jordan's stormy banks, I stand and cast a wishful eye to the Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. Oh, the transporting rapture is seen that rises to my sight. Sweet fields arrayed in living green and the rivers of delight. When shall I reach that happy place and be forever blessed. When shall I see my father's face in his bosom rest? Filled with delight, my raptured soul would no longer linger stay. Though Jordan's waves around me fall, fearless, I launch. Psalm 86. God's home. God's home. <coughs> And he who sat there was like jasper and sardis stone in appearance. God is transparent. God is light. He's transparent. He's light. At the foot of Mount Sinai, like yes. Moses, 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 get in between us. We can't take the presence of God. Flesh and blood can't. When we finally see him, we're going to see all the energy that's about God. Yes, Lord. And in the spirit, we're going to be able to handle his arrayness, yes. his power, yes, and his glory. Yes, and we're going to be forever. Amen. 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 He 
why this religious community better get it together. They better be talking about something that makes sense on Sunday. Instead of talking about themselves, they better free people so people will long for a homecoming with God. And people will start straightening up their house. I bet you if I came into your house, I'm going to find some cleaning solution. Even if you don't clean. I'm going to find something to wipe something off. Even if you don't. God's house around his throne, he got four beings that report to him that don't go to sleep and that sees everything. There are some hey, things that you and I are going to miss. You can walk in my house and put your hand up on top of something and make it a fingertip full of dust. But in God's house, nothing is missed. They see everything and they need to see everything because man coming is wicked. So they know who's coming and who's going. And if they know it around the throne, the one that sits on the throne know it too. And John got to see that. He got to see that. I don't know why people don't understand Revelation. Why is Revelation so hard for people? Why Christians don't have discernible talents when it comes down to the word of God? Why does this baffle you? Hmm, why? 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 You know that God is like, why if I read about Jasper and him, oh, that's just symbolic. We already told you he's like. Yeah. Why do you struggle with that? Why don't you look at God and long for a deeper meaning of who he is? Yes, my so your heart and your mind can be free. Amen. Why in the world should you and I be on this side as a servant, not believing when the one up in heaven has no limitation? Right. Amen. I can't limit God. I can't say what God is not, because God is. Mm -hmm. Before Moses left, I just need you to tell me what shall I say to Pharaoh? Yeah. When he asks me who you are. You tell Pharaoh this, that I am who I am. Because Pharaoh's going to find out that I gave him his kingdom and that I put him on it. And there is no one greater than me. Amen, amen. And when you get an audience with him, tell him that. That's right. Tell him what you've seen. Because as much as I love you, you couldn't step where I am. Hey! Until I made the ground hot. Amen, amen. In this house, is your house and my house like this? Yeah. Hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of glory on their head. And from the throne were seen light and thunder in the voice. Oh, it's loud up here, isn't it? Seven uh, lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Everything about who he is was around him. That's why he's, he's got to be adorned. he got to be praised. Look what it's like. Look what it's like to see who he is and what's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Look. In verse 9, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, mm -hmm. the 24 elders will fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever mm -hmm. and cast their crowns before mm -hmm. the throne. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's amazing. Back in Revelation chapter 1, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ was God gave him to show his soul. Things must, which must shortly take place. And he sent, signified it, by his angel to his servant John. 
Do God consider you and me servants? Do he consider you and me as assets to the kingdom or liabilities? See, that's a question only you can answer. Because I didn't forget John leaning on the gospel. Are you leaning on the everlasting arm? Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you somewhere that's leaning that's on something? Because see, yeah. God didn't forget when John Lean on the gospel. He considered John as a servant. Yeah. What are you leaning on today? Amen. 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 And when God call you home to His house, will the door be open? See how we break it down? Pharisees thought they had God. And what did the Samaritan say? He worshiped him up here on this mountain. Jesus said, both of y'all are wrong. Because God has always been a spirit. And he's always been true. He told David, with all that was right in his eyesight, how can I dwell in a house made by him? Servant John bore witness to the word mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness? <coughs> are you a witness? Yes, yes. You and I, as servants, are we yes. witnesses of God? Mm -hmm. Because in order to be a servant, you got to be a witness. And in yes. order to be about God's things and God showing you some things, you got to witness Witness. and have a testimony. Amen. Do you ever wonder, brothers and sisters, and I'm going to help you with your spiritual analogy, because you always worked up about something. 
Do you ever wonder why you have a spiritual unrest? You just have a spiritual unrest about you. Well, do you lean on the gospel? That's why you have a spiritual unrest. And that was articulately brought to us this morning on the Lord's Supper. There are many who during this time sleep. Mm -hmm. They just sleep. And I'm talking about spiritually. Mm -hmm. You're not leaning on the gospel. You're not leaning on the gospel. We have to lean on the gospel so you can be free. So many, and, and, and Brother Jason did a lovely job today when he first started talking. When you finally get here, are you ready to worship? Yes. Yes. You're right. Yes, Lord. You got it in that piece of car that is made by man. Mm -hmm. There was a million times you put your foot on the brake and it worked. Mm -hmm. The steering mechanism worked. And at any given time, Satan could have took your life on the way to worship. That's right. And when you get to worship, you're not happy. Hey! <laughs> Every single day, you haphazardly believe everything that's in front of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you sit in the chair that you're sitting in, you believe it's going to support your weight. Mm. Yes. You think when you cut the gas off that the valve is working. Yes. You think that everybody is going to pay attention to the red light you stopped. <laughs> That's right. Every time you go over a bridge, you believe it's going to support you. Yes. But you don't believe he who believes in his baptized shall be saved. <laughs> you don't believe that when you come together on the Lord's day, you're worshiping the Father <laughs> and the Holy Spirit. And John was a witness to that. Yeah. Out of all the time you had this week, at this particular time, this is not important to you. I will not partake of this fruit of the mind. <coughs> And I till I take it anew with you in my father's house. Mm -hmm. And they are so to sleep that when we sup with him together, he is remembering how faithful we should be. Yeah. And some of us are sleep. And John was a witness and had a testimony to who he is. And that's why he was chosen to take a peek into God's mouth. Think about it. Think about your Christianity. Think about it. So many times in the Church of Christ itself, we get Baptists. We get Pharisees. And we think but the same God that fought the devil to get you here is the same God that when you in his house wants you to worship him like the 24 hours. Yeah. Like the four living creatures around his throne. And he don't care if you're tired. He don't care if your back is hurting. He don't care if you can't walk. He don't uh, care if you got a migraine because those things he don't have. And all those things he died on the cross for. And when you in his house, you won't have to worry about that no more. Yeah. That's why I want to be with him. That's yeah. right. Because I don't have to worry anymore. I don't have to swallow those four pills anymore. I don't have to have conflict with my brothers and sisters anymore. Because in his house, everything prays him. Right. Amen. Yeah, that's right. So that crazy knucklehead Ellis that's always on his soapbox is going to run into people just like him. Yeah. Because mm. <laughs> in God's house, you're going to be happy to be there. Amen. Yes. Because you was a witness and you had a testimony. Uh. I love Revelation. I, I just love reading it because it just makes me, well, y'all see. <laughs> 
makes me crazy. Because in chapter 3 it says, and at some point before Sunday came to pick up the Bible and read it, man, you got Bible apps now. And hold the phone in your hand and read the Bible. God said, let, let me send some stuff ahead of them. Because pretty soon they ain't going to want to carry this. Because it's going to look like they are Christian. See, when you pull out your smartphone, people think they're that. You don't have to show people that you're God. You can read your little Bible app. God said, let me show them something here. In verse 3, blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy. Pick the Bible up and read Revelation and see how privileged you are to have this in your hand mm -hmm. and to read it. Mm -hmm. You're privileged, brothers and sisters. Amen. Read it and let it, let it open your heart and your mind up. Mm -hmm. Just read it. And when you read it, keep those things which are written in it mm -hmm. for the time is near. That's the opportunity that John got. As he looks up into the sky, John sees there before him a door standing open in heaven. Verse 1. The sky was like an open window to Jesus at his baptism. Mark 1, 10 to 11. It is like an open door to John. For the voice, the same trumpet, like voice he heard once before, beckons him to pass through the door, come up here and I will show you what takes place after this. John stopped shortly after narrating a full-blown heavenly journey, like the journeys of such characters as Enoch in the Jewish literature, 1st Enoch, 14, 825, and even like the journey of Paul, who was caught up in the third heaven and heard inexpressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. And John will say, is that once I was in the spirit, just as in the introduction version of happiness, there he was in the spirit first, and then he heard a voice. Here it is the other way around. Nowhere have we been told when or under what circumstances John stopped being in the spirit. But now we are told that he is in the spirit once more. The time he is indeed caught up to heaven, for he sees before him a throne in heaven with someone sitting. But in this chapter and in those to follow, we will again look in vain for any clear signal as to when John stopped being in the spirit. Or when he comes down from heaven, only to a limited degree can we obtain in our reading of Revelation a sense of where we are. John's description of what he saw in heaven is like the rest of the New Testament, true to classic Jewish principles that no one has ever seen God. In many ways, it recalls Ezekiel's uh, introductory vision, except that John is, if anything, even more um, relent, uh, uh, relents it uh, than Ezekiel about naming or describing God directly. When John sees, what John sees is both a throne room and at the same time a place of worship, specifically a temple. Ezekiel, in his day, saw a throne of sapphire and on it a figure like that of a man, which he identified as the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. John, by contrast, speaks only of the throne in heaven <coughs> and someone sitting on it. This someone has no name or title, but for the moment at least, it seems that no one sat there with the appearance of Jasper. To John, the throne represents the power and majesty of one sitting on it, and everything else who he sees is described in relation to this central throne. Encircling it, he saw a rainbow resembling an emerald. Surrounding it in a wider circle were 24 other thrones on which seated 24 elders in white, wearing gold crowns. From it came flashing in light, rumbling and pearls of thunder. Before or in front of it, seven lamps were blazing, which John identifies for us as the seven spirits of God. In front of it too, he saw 
uh, what looked like a sea of glass, clear of crystal. Finally, in the center, around the throne, John saw four living creatures with eyes on every side and six wings who continually said, yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and is to come. What started as a heavenly tribunal unfolding step by step before John's eyes now yeah. becomes a scene of active worship and proclamation. The use of verbs in the present tense begins in verse 5, mm. and the phrase day and night in verse yeah. 8 give the impression that this is no longer something yeah. John saw once in a vision, but a ritual in heaven repeating itself over and over again without rest or interruption. The throne is suddenly alive with living creatures hailing and honestly someone seated on it as the Lord God Almighty. In reply, the 24 elders continue to fall down to worship this one who lives for heaven, laying their crowns in front of the throne and saying, You are worthy, O Lord, O God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by you, you they were created and had their being. The elder song celebrates creation and God the Creator probably as a reference point for the new creation to come. Although John, in his vision, does not claim to experience the passage of time, he manages to convey a sense that what he saw is something still going on in heaven, even as we read this prophecy. So God, John got to see the activity of heaven itself. And I believe that it's, the writings is true. Mm -hmm. It is still going on ongoing. You know why? Because Jesus hasn't come back from the church. Mm -hmm. So that's still going on right now. God's house is still active mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And when judgment day comes, God is going to pause that activity. Everything's going to stand still before him. Yes. Because we all wow. stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. Give an account wow. for the things we've done in the Bible. So yes. heaven is going to stand still while God judges. Amen. And we're all going to be in his house, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. And he's going to already have already designed, just like he said, let there be light. There already is going to be the fire of brimstone. Yeah. And Satan is going to already be in it with his demons because they've already been cast there. They know their state. So they're going to already be in there screaming and howling. And he's going to let us see before the judgment <laughs> seat what it is like to be in his house. Yes. And then he's going to let us see what it's going to be like to be kicked out. Yes. See, and that's going to be the terrible thing for mankind. Because first, mm -hmm. mankind's going to experience what it's going to be like to lose what it's going to be like forever. Yeah. Isn't that a horrible judgment scene? Yeah. The good, the bad, and the ugly, the righteous, and the unrighteous is going to be in the spirit. They're going to stand before God, and you're going to get to see that there's nothing yes. wrong where you at. There's nothing yes. wrong where you not going. <laughs> And all the time that you laughed at him, all the time you mocked him, all the time as a Christian you didn't believe, all the time you was asleep. Amen. You want to be where the worm never died. Mm -hmm. And he's going to look at you and you're going to tremble. You're going to know because you're going to know when in the spirit what you did in the flesh. Yeah. You're going to know you wasn't home. <laughs> you're going to know your house wasn't like this. You ain't stupid. Just because you died don't mean you're going to lose all sense of reality. The same person you was in the flesh is going to be the same person you are in the spirit. Amen. Oh, my God. It's going to have us remember me. Yes, Lord. Remember that day hey, hey. when you no longer wanted to walk with me. Hey. Oh, my God. Alice, did you hear me? Yes. Thundering and lightning, did you hear me? I know you heard me. No, you don't have nothing to say right now. <laughs> but I remember. Yes. I remember when the spouse was more important to me. The job was more important to me. Your 401 was more important to me. Where are you now? Hey, man. God's going to get a chance to talk back. I remember when your attitude toward me was nothing. You know, it's my turn. Do you smell it? Because I do. And I told you that the next time it was going to be by fire. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Remember the flood? Remember you thought it was funny? Well, the stench of sin that was floating before me, I didn't like. I said, so the next time, because I knew it was going to be a next time. And Ellis, it was that next time. Hey, man, 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 man. I got a spot for you. Yeah. 
and it's elbow room only. Hey. And I got a slot I'm going to put you in yes, with your name on it. Look around you. Those up here are freely moving about. Hey. You're going to be caged in where you belong because you did not know me. Hey. And I'm the light of the world, but where you going, there's going to be darkness. Hey. Because you didn't live for me. Hey. Your house wasn't a reflection of me. You always had something to say. But now I'm ready. Yes. Hey. Where you going today, Ellis? You going where I'm sending you. Now that you smell it, do you see it? I got a name for you. And it's called death. And that's where you're going to die for eternity. Because everything that is not light is darkness. And everything that's not life, Ellis, is death. Yeah. Mm. That's where you're going. Yes, sir. Because I'm gone. And I forever live. There's no beginning to me. There's no end. Now it's my turn. Because in my house, I know I'm letting you. Yes, my God. They look like my son. They act like my son. And they're all. My son. Look at him. He just went and got him. Some of them people talk to me. When you lost him. I sent him to you every day. And you gave him no mind. But now their lives are a reflection of who I am. And who I am. Is that what you want to hear, church? It's going to be real. Because you're going to be in the Father's house. With the king <coughs> sitting on the throne. And everything around it is going to be a reflection of him. And he's not going to put you. Some people, even this morning, this afternoon,
Can you interpret your dreams? Do you have dreams? Do you dream of heaven? Do you dream of hell? Do you dream of all kinds of things? Mm -hmm. That's your makeup. That's your DNA. That's who you are. Yeah. God breathed the breath of life in you. That's who you are. Everything. I'm looking at the birds, the cats, the flowers. The Everything is, is created by God. And just read it. Read it. And just read it. Study the Bible and read it. So when you come to worship, like I was saying this morning, the Bible study class. Many times when I have sat for 30 something years and I've heard some preach them, heard them. There are some sermons that I heard that took me home in tears because my life was. Mm -hmm. Sermons that I took home in joyful tears because I praise God that at that particular Sunday I got it right. Yeah. And I was happy on the way home. There are sermons that I've heard that I wanted to go study more. Yes. Well, some of you I heard, they didn't affect me at all. Because they didn't affect me at all. But every Sunday that I've listened or have taught, there was somebody that this house sermon was for. Yes. Because yes. their house is in right. Now you can be in denial. Yes. Oh, everything's all right in my house. Who's examining your home? Hey, hey, I remember when we used to live in the terrace. Mm -hmm. The office used to say, we coming by to exterminate and inspect the house. Yeah. So they'd come in and they would inspect the home. You tell, you know, don't keep the bread here and everything, don't leave everything open and stuff like that. Because you know, when we get roaches in here, it's hard. They're gonna run from your house to somebody else's house because you live in an apartment building. So they inspect the home. Is anybody inspecting your home? Yeah, hey. yeah. See, that's what the sermon was about this morning. Yes. You may think that everything's all right in your house. Under whose estimation? Yours or God? God is showing you what his house is like. Yes. Is your house like his? Yes. Think about it. Think about it. Is the devil in your home? Yes. If the devil's in your home, then your home's not God. <coughs> home's not God? Amen. God wants your house to be like his house. You don't know, and I don't know. And he's calling a mortgage. <laughs> you know that. Even if you rent it, there's a landlord. And if God calls the mortgage in, you won't have ours. <laughs> and everything about our dwelling here on earth, when we stand before God, and it's going to be so quick, it's going to be mind boggling. Everything that we preciously worship before God is not going to even be there. Amen. <laughs> So those of us who are tied to money, money system is going to be gone. Yes. Those of us who are tied to material things, material things are going to be gone. Mm -hmm. The only thing we're going to see is facts. Yes. That's God's time. And if you wasn't like Paul longing to be there, you're not going there. How did God let you in his home when you don't want to come? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You don't want to go there. You made that perfectly clear. By the way, you ran your house. Ooh. God already told you what it's all going to be like. Amen. Matter of fact, brothers and sisters, to go to God's house for what we just read is going to make you uncomfortable. Because mm. that's not the way you live your life. Yes. That's not the way you live your life. So you're going to be uncomfortable. And God is not going to have you uncomfortable in this home. Mm. Think about it. Because when you go to a righteous person home, and that's all they do is talk about the Bible. Praise God and everything. You're uncomfortable. You know why? Because you don't praise God all the time. Well, I don't like going there because every time I turn around, we end up talking about the Bible. What is there to talk about? Your job? Your problem? Think about it. Just think about it. In Acts chapter 2, verse 36 to 47, they made it clear. It was a long sermon. There were a lot of people. And people were long-winded Preach. Along with the letter, because they all had something to say. And this made it clear to the audience that they were talking to that God is real. Amen. Resurrection Amen. is real. The cross is real. Yes. These people got together and said, hmm. It's right. A lot of those people got there. It's 3,000 of them said, you know what? Messed up. God said that there are believers who believe that baptism is for salvation. But you 
already believe in your heart that Jesus is the Christ.
prayer. Right. And you made it out of here without being born again. Mm -hmm. You made a big mistake. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't our fault. Amen. Because you got your truth. Amen. The song has been designed to do just that. To help you come forward. The song leader is ready. The congregation is ready. You please be ready as we stand in the center.